On this episode of Redefine, we sit down with Katie Brown and talk about how she got started as the next Martha Stewart. Katie is the host of two television programs, Lifetime Television's Next Door with Katie Brown and PBS's The Katie Brown Workshop. She's also an author, syndicated columnist, product line owner, and mother of two. We are both donating our time and services to the Children's Museum of the East End in the Hamptons, and we had a chance in the middle of the chaos to drop down on some cardboard boxes in a corner room and discuss how she does it all, what it takes to actually get hired as a commercial photographer, and just how much courage and work is needed when going after something you really, really want, even if it means telling a little white lie. You're watching Redefine with Tamara Lackey, presented by Adorama TV. Before we talk to our fabulous guest, I'd like to introduce a segment that we call, How Did I Not Know About This? How do we stay organized and keep our lives free of so much clutter? Meet Evernote. This program brings together any document from your cell phone or your computer or your email. It just pulls it all into one great resource. It's like a personal assistant that is savvy and smart and never misses anything. So if you just made a great business contact, go ahead and snap a picture of the business card and upload it. Meet the man of your dreams, do not lose his number. Just a little time clicking around in this program and you'll be all like, how did I not know about this? Unclutter your desk, unclutter your inbox, get back to living. I downloaded Evernote at www.evernote.com and my life has not been the same since. I hear the question a lot, people say, um, what mistakes did you make early on in your career? And I would rather uh, talk about what do you know you did right? What do I know I did right? I know that um, A, when I saw an opportunity, I over-delivered. You yes. know, if, if Lifetime was where my first show was and when they first started looking, Martha was leaving Lifetime and going to CBS, so they were looking for a new Martha Stewart. Somehow they happened to get my name. It's a convoluted, fantastic story, but it happened. <laughs> and so, you know, when they called, I was like, I'm going to deliver so much more. I'm going to give so much more of myself to see if I can get this gig. So at least I've known I've done everything I could. What does that mean? What I do, always what tell people, you know, you have to give 150%. Um, so so, for example, we all had to send in, um, all the other candidates and myself had to send in kind of a pictures of rooms we'd redecorated, dinners we've cooked, uh, menus we've planned. So I put together like a big gift box. It was pretty amazing, you know, like, it wasn't just it a was scrapbook, if I do say so myself, I did the right thing. Um, we, I put each thing on a card and it kind of told a whole story that ended in, you know, this big party. So it was like a big gift that they got and unwrapped and, and similar. Oh, so, you, so you stopped and said, uh, back to presentation. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. And hard work, you know, yeah. I probably spent an entire seven days and seven nights on it, you know, just because I wanted it to be all that. Yeah. And, and then you right. So I called them up and I had about a dollar to my name at that time. <laughs> I called them up and said, I'm going to be in New York next week. Could I meet with you? Yeah. And that, you know, I flew myself out there and right. I got in a room with them as opposed to just talking on the phone and sending right. them off something. Like, you so, have to meet me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, th I mean, you just always think, what else can I do? You know, right. so those were two ways in the beginning that I pushed myself on them, pushed myself on them. <laughs> And, you know, the other thing I did right is, I think you know when you love something. Mm -hmm. And I just had so much fun with all this work and yeah. all that I thought, if I can get paid for this, that would be crazy. And so you just learn how to do what you love. You know, right. Oprah says that, not to, I know everyone quotes her, what can I say, no but she's awesome. She I think said, she's gone full circle. Like, it's okay again. Yeah, that's Oprah right. Said. Okay, so Oprah okay. said um, that you should be, you know, the best you you can be. Yeah. And I think that that says it all right there. I, you know, when you're doing something that speaks to you way down deep in your toes, that's when the bell should go off and go, I gotta push this and yeah. I have to make it work. And that's kind of what I did and what I do every day.
It's a great job when you have a mo when I'm a mom, and right, you know right. because I'm. How my does own. that work? Well, I, well, work? it doesn't. I mean, you know, I'm still. Uh, <laughs> I, and people say, now, how do you do it all? I was like, barely. I don't think I do. You know, but it is great because I'm my own boss, yes. and I have great people who work for me, and so I can sneak out a lot, you know, and yeah. I can create my own time schedule. And I think with two little children. I'm very grateful I get to do that right. because then I can go to the school play. I can do drop off and pick up periodically. Yeah. And um, so that's, and events like this, they can be here. You right. Know? So you're like working, giving back, that's and right. Well being. That's right. Yeah. So it's not, you know, we try and pick things that are going to be all, you know, good for all of us right. in a way. Right. So, so there's more strategy involved with that. There too. is. It, but it's instinct. You know, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, the kids are going to go to that anyway. Why not do the food for it? You know, yes, so um, that's kind of the way it goes. Are you a photographer as well? Oh, I like to think of myself as one. But no, and when I write my books and things like that, we hire a photographer right. who does it all. It's actually been the same photographer for all of my books, and he's wonderful. And what photographers do and if you find a good one, you know, obviously who you choose to work with along the way is really important mm -hmm. because they make you look better. Yeah. They make me, yeah. he makes me look so much better. Yeah. I mean, not just me physically, but my projects and the whole atmosphere of what we do. So, uh, yeah, it's important to find. Uh, and, you know, I work with a lot of, I also do a lot of endorsements every year. I'll pick three or four, whether it's Hewlett Packard or... Uh, Splenda or craft food and you know they hire other photographers mm -hmm. and so I've, I've worked obviously over the years with many many different yeah. types of photographers and they're kind of freaky by yeah <laughs> I, I, no they're not I'm they're teasing. lovely um, but but you I know the ones who I'd work with again and right. they always seem to be the ones who are like yeah let's roll with it if you think that right. looks better let's go and let's see how you know even more important than quality of work for me is that same kind of spirit that I attack a project with yes. which is that they're willing to give 150 yeah. percent way back I think it was maybe 15 years ago now when when I was looking for the photographer, um, my book was with Harper Collins, and they had given me a list of four or five acceptable photographers to them. And I interviewed them all, and I knew I wanted lots of shots. Mm -hmm. And I knew, because I had done the math, in order what I could afford, and how I needed like 35 shots a day. Okay. And most of the photographers fell off their chair. As a matter of fact, he was the only one who was like, we could do that. I can make that happen. So when somebody has a can-do attitude, yes. especially a photographer, because sometimes they can be kind of prima donna-ish, and you, know. you know they're the artist too, and you're the artist, yes. and so you really need to find someone who has a spirit that is not going to be too intrusive, because his work's important, but our work's important. So you have to find you want to find someone who seems to be able to be flexible right. and roll with it and you know sometimes the cake doesn't come out on time sometimes the cake doesn't come out so you've <laughs> got to come out you know if you're within the photographer who goes well it says we're going to do it right here on the schedule right now and we're going to run out of you know you just it's yeah. so a flexible it's not that's are. right yes. a flexible kind of can do anything yeah. is is almost more important than the quality of the photographs that is that that is so helpful it's really that's true. really it's good to really know. Well, thank you for taking the time uh, thank you also what do you say do you say you're welcome you say you're welcome you're welcome we're leaving we're leaving you're leaving we're leaving you're leaving let's, let's all we leave. love you but we're leaving we're gonna leave say now. bye bye say bye bye say bye bye camera say bye 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 bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.